Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this video. I mean, look at this huge pile of favorite reads of 2021. Oh, it's so heavy though. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to a new video and always one of my favorites to film, to watch, and to talk about. So in this video, I will be showing you guys the top 10 books that I read in 2021. I have a huge mixture of genres. I have like horror, thrillers, I have contemporary fiction, I have middle grade, fantasy, whatever. It's a huge mix of everything. So I'm sure that there will be books in today's video that I will be talking about that will pique your interest. <laughs> and a lot of the books that I read this year that I really, really enjoyed were actually brought to you by today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. I'm so excited that they wanted to work with me again. If you aren't aware what Book of the Month is, I feel like one, you have been living under a rock, <laughs> but two, I will be explaining everything to you right now. They are a super fast growing online bookish surface, which is perfect for readers like you and I. And what they do is basically they have a team that vets hundreds of different books and every single month they make a selection of like their top five new release hardcover fiction that is coming out during that particular month. And this way you can save time because you don't have to do like all the research for, oh my gosh, which book is coming out this month that actually would be so great to read. They have done the job job for you and you can spend more time reading your new favorite books. You can receive these books for a super affordable price and I have a special deal for you guys. If you use my personal code Sabine, you can get your first book of the month book for just $9.99. A new release hardcover fiction for that price is insanely cheap. Do note that they do not ship internationally. They only ship to the US. So now is the most exciting part in my opinion and that is the January book of the month unboxing. So I'm gonna show you all the titles that they picked for January, but if you don't like any of them, you can always choose one of their add-on options. And if you don't like any of the monthly picks or the add-ons, Book of the Month is still risk-free. You can skip any month, anytime, and you will not be charged. One of the add-on books that they sent to me for January is The Maid by Nita Prose. In this absolute charmer, we follow Monty Gray as she tries to solve the murder at her hotel before anyone pins it on her. Another book that I'm super interested in is Fiona and Jane by Jen Cheng Ho. In these braided short stories, two girls come of age and learn friendship is both indispensable and a great challenge. They always have the best romance picks and for January they chose Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This delicious queer rom-com proves that like the best meals, true love is hard work, a bit messy, but oh so rewarding. Then we have a thriller which is called Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. In this book, we follow 20 year olds and they quickly learn that island life is about the little things. Strong drinks, soft sand, cool water, and murder. Then we have contemporary fiction, Black Cake by Tremaine Wilkerson. Brimming with wisdom, a moving story of two siblings who went their watch to reconciliation after losing their mother. And then finally, we have historical fiction, The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. A rich tale suffused with intrigue, mystery, and betrayal that swirls around the history of the infamous freak family. So thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Like I said, use code Sabine to get your first Book of the Month box for just $9.99. And now we're going to talk about my favorite reads of 2021. How I'm going to do this is that there is a kind of order. I try to actually put it in like a top 10 rank. Number 10 is a YA horror that has been like blown up during the past year and that is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. Not only is the cover gorgeous and it really describes like the vibe of it as well. It was so incredibly addicting. I read this together with Lexi from Alexandra Roslin for my reading Lexi's favorites video, which I absolutely adored. I think that this book also became one of her faves, but we just really wanted to read a book together that would probably fit in with our reading styles. And it absolutely did just that. In this one, you follow the three hollow sisters. And when they were children, they went missing for, I think over a month and they randomly reappeared again. However, their appearance had changed drastically. Instead of having dark brown hair, their hair was completely like white. I even believe their irises changed color as well, but they also didn't remember 
anything about the disappearance, which is so very strange. 10 years later, the timeline in which our story takes place, one of the sisters goes missing again, the eldest actually, and the two other sisters are gonna go and look for her, but they are not the only ones. I talked about this as well in a different video. I think I recommended it as like, if you enjoy this TV show or movie, you will enjoy this book as well. So if you like Stranger Things without giving any spoilers, I feel like you will really, really enjoy House of Hollow. There were so many creepy moments moments that really freaked me out and I distinctly remember somewhere around like chapter 10 something so disgusting happened and I was reading it at night here in my room and I just could not sleep afterwards. <laughs> However, I loved it so so much. I already want to give it a reread because I don't even remember what happened at the ending but that's not this book's fault. That's just my brain and how it's malfunctioning all the time. <laughs> It's really gloomy outside, so sorry if like the light changes constantly in this video, but number nine is actually a really old booktube fave. And when a book becomes super hyped or like a lot of people are talking about it on booktube or Instagram, just wherever in the community, I always like shut down <laughs> because I would really like to pick it up, but then I always get scared. Like what if it doesn't live up to the hype for me? However, this book totally did. And that is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This one was popular like four or five years ago. This is honestly how my reading goes. I always read books way after they became popular. This is a historical fiction that tells the story of Queen Jane. I'm so bad with history things. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> But this story is told from three different perspectives, that of King Edward, who is only 16, but he is also dying. And he's thinking more of like, who will be his first kiss instead of like, oh my gosh, who will be the heir to the throne instead of me? Then we have Jane, who is Edward's cousin. And I believe that she was basically engaged to Edward, to her nephew. Great. And then we have Gifford, who is an Ethian, and those are basically people who can transform into animals, so Gifford can transform into a horse. Every day at dawn, he becomes a noble chestnut steed, but then he wakes at dusk with a mouthful of hay. It's all very undignified. However, the three of them are kind of like thrown into this conspiracy theory. They have to work together, and honestly, it is so hilarious, especially because these people can change into animals, and sometimes it's just so inconvenient, and then it just randomly happens and all of these hilarious scenarios start happening. But I also really liked the political intrigue of like the Ethians, the people who can turn into animals and then like the regular humans and them kind of having a fight. But mostly the banter is fantastic. It was just a ton of fun. So I flew through this and the audiobook, you have to give it a go because it's so nice. I know that there are more books in this like companion novel series, but I've heard mixed things about those. So I'm not planning on reading them, but a like new historical fiction series by these authors has just come out. Is it with like Contrary Mary or something. I will put like the cover of the first book in that series up because I honestly don't know what it's called, but that one has received great reviews. So I might pick that one up in the future, 2022. I can't make any promises. Then my favorite psychological thriller is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. And if it weren't for book of the month, I would not have picked up this book myself. And that would have been a shame because this one was so good and the plot twist was phenomenal. Adam and Amelia have been married for quite some time right now and they have been experiencing problems. Amelia though has won a trip to this secluded place somewhere in Scotland and they kind of see it as their like last resort trying to fix things in their marriage or they will get divorced. So they both know that this weekend to Scotland will either like break or heal their relationship. However, they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying and they don't want to live happily ever after. The chapters are really short. That is always a plus in my opinion. And they ended on a cliffhanger every single time. So that keeps you wanting to read more and it doesn't make you want to stop reading the story. The house in which they are staying is so creepy. So sometimes it felt a bit like a horror book as well. I don't think you can consider it to be a horror book, but if you are easily spooked, 
perhaps don't pick this up at night and just kind of like make sure that you get a distraction after reading this. It's such a great psychological thriller and this book made me realize that I absolutely need to read more of this genre. Then a book that I want to talk about is one that the majority of us had been waiting for and it was probably one of our most anticipated releases of 2021 and that is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I actually made a whole reading vlog discussing this book because I got an arc so I got to read it before it was actually out which was just an amazing experience because Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favorite authors so for that reading vlog I also reread The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and this is without a a doubt. I think my number one favorite book of all time at the moment and I reread it this year so I did want to mention it in this like top 10 but I've already read it once so does it really count for this list, you know? I just wanted to mention it. If you haven't picked it up yet, please go do so. It's fantastic. To quickly summarize it, it's about a 1950s to 1980s super famous actress. And she basically tells her whole life story throughout the seven marriages that she had. And she really wanted to share this story of her life with a specific journalist who is totally unpopular. So you're kind of like figuring out her life story, but also why she specifically wanted to talk to that reporter. It's so good, you will be an emotional wreckage after finishing this one, so be prepared. And Malibu Rising follows the offspring of one of Evelyn Hugo's husbands. Am I making sense? I hope I do. <laughs> Four famous siblings throw an epic party to celebrate the end of the summer, but over the course of 24 hours, their lives will change forever. They are the offspring of this famous singer called Mick Riva. Nina, the eldest of the bunch, is a talented surfer and supermodel. She also has two brothers, Jay and Hud, one a championship surfer, the other a renowned photographer, and their adored baby sister Kit, and together they are a source of fascination in Malibu. And the most promising thing about the synopsis to me was that by midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Riva Mansion will have gone up in flames. But before that first spark in the early hours before dawn, the alcohol will flow, the music will play, and the loves and secrets that shaped this family's generation will all come bubbling to the surface. And this book is kind of like broken up, I believe, into two pieces. So before midnight, before the party escalates, and then after after midnight while the escalation is happening. You learn about Mick Riva's marriage to the sibling's mother. Also the siblings themselves have a lot of secrets that slowly get like exposed in the story as well. So that was just so interesting. It made their relationship super complicated. I do have to say though, a point of critique is that the first half of this book, in my opinion, was better than the second half because once the party really starts, you get to know a ton of different perspectives as well from like random famous people that the Rivas like hang out with and sometimes I was just like I don't care about ex celebrities opinion just give me the perspectives of the Rivas like it was fine but I wish it was done differently. The setting also is great. This is a perfect summer read because it takes place in Malibu at the beach and Taylor Jenkins Reid just has in my opinion a phenomenal writing style. I cannot pinpoint to what it is that I absolutely adore about it. It's just so amazing and you start to care for her characters like all the time and kind of like instantaneously. So it might not have been my favorite Taylor Jenkins read book of all time. I definitely prefer Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones and the Six, but it was still so good. I was not disappointed by this one at all. And now we are going on to my top three books, bookish series of 2021. So first off, we have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is a historical fiction contemporary story. I think you would classify it as historical fiction, actually. This one came out in 2020. This was such a popular release back then, and it did not disappoint. I can definitely see why it is so many people's favorite books and why it was so hyped. In this one, we follow the Vine, if I'm saying that correctly, or like the Vignes sisters. It's written like this. I don't know how to pronounce it, but they basically grew up in this super small black community when they were children. And when they became older, they started to live very separate lives. One of the sisters lives with her black daughter in the same like Southern small black community that they grew up in. And she lives her life as a black woman. And then one of the other sister goes on and lives her life as a white woman. And even her husband knows nothing like 
of her past and that she is actually black. And although they are so like distant from each other, like the whole lives are completely separated through their daughters, their stories like intertwine again. And, and like working up towards that point of them seeing each other after so many years was so beautifully crafted so beautifully executed it did take me like a hundred pages to get into the writing style to get into the story but once i was like completely sucked in i could not stop picking this one up i especially loved one of the daughters her relationship that she had with someone like it was so beautiful so many heartbreaking things were happening and this story takes place from like the 1960s until the 1990s and it truly felt like you were experiencing the story through those time periods. I don't know, I loved it so much. So what it says here on the back is also that The Vanishing Half is at once a riveting emotional family story and a brilliant exploration of race, gender, and identity, and the lasting influence of the past as it shapes a person's desires and expectations. And I couldn't word it more perfectly. So I really wanna read Britt Bennett's other book, which is called The Mothers. I don't know what it's about, but I feel like I will really, really love her other work as well made me super emotional. So yeah, that was just a stunning, beautiful book. And on my number two, I have another stunning, beautiful series, actually, a middle grade fantasy series, which is Nevermore. <laughs> I don't know why I'm singing that, but Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. And I read the first three books in this middle grade series. I don't know how many books are gonna get published, but I think around six or maybe nine, like don't quote me on it. But this year I hosted a read along together with Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe for this series. And it was so wonderful. I don't know, like so many amazing feelings are just attached to this series like when I look at it and my ultimate favorite of these three is actually the second book which is Wondersmith and I think that is because in this one you also have like a murder mystery element and I really like murder mysteries that is definitely something that I have discovered in 2021 so I won't get into the synopses of like Wondersmith and Holopox just know that they are absolutely amazing but in this series we follow Morgan Crow and she is actually cursed and destined to die on her 11th birthday but when the clock strikes midnight on her birthday she gets whisked away to this magical land called Nevermore and the person taking her is Jupiter North which is the best like mentor perhaps father figure but you know he's just like a quirky mentor guiding Morgan through like her whole Nevermore experience but when she arrives in Nevermore she is invited to this wondrous society which is all about like magic mystery magic and protection are hers if she can only pass four impossible trials using an exceptional talent which she doesn't have or so she thinks I should say <laughs> Spoilers, T. This series has definitely become one of my favorite middle grade series. I haven't read much, to be honest. I really want to get more into middle grade books. But this is so magical. The characters are amazing. I love the world. And if you really like trial type of books, like competitions, this one is perfect for you. And I just love all of the side characters as well. Like Jupiter North is my favorite, but I don't know. I just have like a thing for mentors. And when book four is coming out, I think somewhere in 2022, Olivia and I will definitely be hosting a read-along for that one as well. So hopefully if you've read these three books as well or are planning on doing so, you will be able to join us for book four. Honestly, wholesome, magical, mysterious, adventurous. What else do I need to say to convince you to pick up this series? And then I think my number one book for 2021, I mean, it's been such a long time since I read this. I read this at the beginning of the year, so I actually really wanna give it a reread already, but I've been gushing about this book throughout the year, and that is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Don't let this cover fool you. It looks kind of strange. It's like so fluorescent yellow, like in your face with just like animals on the cover? What the hell could this book be about? This is a three perspectives type of story and we follow, I think you could kind of consider her our main character, our main focus, and that is Alex Craft. Her older sister Anna was murdered three years ago and the killer walked free. Alex uncaged the language she knows best, the language of violence. And you get to know early on in the book that she has committed a pretty serious 
crime and no one knows about it until so far. Alex regulates herself to the shadows, a girl who goes unseen in plain sight, unremarkable in the high school hallways. But we then follow Jack Fisher, who's kind of like the popular guy in school, the jock, and he definitely sees Alex. Guilt over the role he played the night Anna's body was discovered hasn't let him forget Alex, and now her green eyes amid a constellation of freckles have his attention. He doesn't want to only see Alex Kraft, he wants to know her. And then the last perspective is that of PK, which stands for Preacher's Kid. She is a girl whose identity is kind of like entangled with her dad's job, but that doesn't stop her from knowing the taste of beer or missing the touch of her ex boyfriend. And PK and Alex start working together at this animal shelter and just the three of their stories kind of get like intertwined. I am just really really bad with genres but I think you would consider this to be like a contemporary fiction but it has like this huge thriller element to it. Definitely a ton of trigger warnings like content warnings for this book but yeah this one specifically talks about rape, rape culture, feminism, stuff like that. These are all topics that I find very interesting and I actually quite like to read about them and because it read like a thriller. I think I finished this one in three days. Just the ending was very very shocking to me. I cried so much. I think I actually sobbed reading this book and now I really want to read more of Mindy McGinnis' work because I think she writes so many different genres so I'm very interested to see what her other work will bring me and how I will like that. So okay <laughs> these were the 10 books, oh my gosh, they're gonna fall. Woo. The 10 books that I wanted to talk about with you guys, let me know in the comments down below. If you've read any of these, I'd be very interested to hear your opinions. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree, but let's talk about it in the comments and let me know what your favorite reads are of 2021. Perhaps I can like up some of them on my TBR if I see the titles popping up in the comments. And don't forget to check out Book of the Month. A link is in my description and use code Sabine to get your first box for just $9.99. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.